Hi, everybody who is uh, already joining the uh, live chat and the live channel. Uh, we are excited to uh, present our fifth workshop, Turning on the Idea Faucet, this morning. We'll get started here in about four minutes or so. And as more and more are uh, coming in, uh, thank you for coming to uh, our fifth workshop. Uh, workshop number five is Turn on the Idea Faucet. We're going to show you today how to create amazing content through personal character traits and uh, how, how, to, how, how to take a source or a resource, uh, show prep uh, topics, and turn that into multiple ideas that can fit for just about any show. I'm going to start in about three minutes. Stand by. For those of you just joining, uh, more and more are coming in. Thank you for uh, coming to our workshop. Uh, today, it's mostly for personalities. We're going to be sharing uh, some techniques and some concepts on how you can get over uh, a content rut or a content slump uh, by turning on the idea faucet, how to create amazing content through personal character traits through that are customized just for you. We'll show you some different uh, techniques that you can really get into unique original content from the same sources that everybody else is using. Uh, we're going to get started here in about two minutes. Uh, so uh, welcome uh, everybody from uh, everywhere. Uh, Tomislav from uh, Croatia is on and Arkansas checking in and DJ Charlie and uh, D Wayne. Uh, thanks very much. Some of you are already discovering the chat box. Thanks for using the chat. Uh, you can uh, type that in. If you're if you're watching this at tjohnsonmediagroup.com, you don't have access to the chat box. If you want to come over to the YouTube channel, you can type in the chat box. That's where we'll be taking questions and answers at the end of today's presentation. Uh, Mike Shepard, Andy Meadows, and I will be talking about how to turn on the idea faucet for personalities. And if you're a program director that's on the workshop today, uh, it's a great uh, technique that you can apply when you're air checking your talent, when you're working with them on a regular basis to inspire deeper and better preparation and different performance. So we'll, we'll, we'll show you how to use those techniques here in just a few minutes. And if you have any questions or input uh, along the way, you can type it into the chat box on the YouTube live channel. So if you're on the uh, website watching, Go to YouTube Live and you can interact. Um, if you don't want to interact, that's fine too. Just stay on the on the website and watch it there. Starting in about one minute.
Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to workshop number five, how to turn on the idea faucet. I'm Tracy Johnson, along with Andy Meadows and Mike Shepard. We're the uh, talent coaches and uh, consultants for the Tracy Johnson Media Group. And today we are going to share with you some concepts and ideas and show you how to turn on the idea faucet. And uh, Mike, this was inspired a couple of weeks ago with one of our clients uh, who came to us, one of our morning shows said, hey, I'm in a rut. I'm not coming up with anything fresh. And so we said, this would be a great workshop. Right. Yeah, I mean, real creative guy, too, uh, that we work with. He came to us and said, boy, I'm just, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm struggling, feel like I'm pushing here. And uh, and we talked about some of the ways that uh, that, uh, you know, he could push through. And, and actually, I'm glad to say that that he did and came back and said, hey, I'm, I'm rejuvenated here. Well, it happens with everybody. It happens with every personality. It happens with every program director because we go to the same office, we go to the same studio, we go to the same station every day and kind of live the same life. It's easy to fall into those ruts. And a lot of shows when they do prep are looking at a yellow pad and a show prep sheet. And there's this pattern and routine of sameness almost every day. It's almost like Groundhog Day repeating itself. So uh, Andy's a former basketball player um, and you know, athletes get into slumps and oh, talent yeah. get into slumps too. So uh, talk about that and how that, how that affects the creative process. Well, like there's a good and bad to routines. I mean, they certainly help us manage workload. So that's why we all, I mean, there's a reason why we all get into routines, but then they, you can't help but have that stifle your creativity, no, no matter what, whether you're a, you know, an on-air personality, a, a songwriter, a, you know, uh, what whatever you happen to be doing. So today we hope to inspire some ideas and some techniques that will allow you to be fresh, to be unique, to be different, and to really get that idea faucet started. So if you have any comments along the way, you can type them into the chat box. Uh, if you are on tjohnsonmediagroup.com watching, you can come over to the YouTube channel, YouTube Live, and we, you can interact, you can ask us questions, you can contribute your content. Uh, when we finish, uh, it'll be about a 20 minute presentation today. We will stay on and answer questions as long as you have questions. And you can type those right into the chat box at uh, YouTube Live. So personalities get into slumps. Uh, show prep does become routine. How do you get re-inspired? How do you get out of that slump? Uh, Mike, when, when we were talking with our client a couple of weeks ago, how, how did how did he get out of that? How did he start to see things differently? Well, one of the things we, we talked about, uh, and, and we've talked about this in our show prep seminars before too, and we've got some great resources on the website about it, but it, you know, a lot of people, you, you mentioned the uh, the yellow pad and, you know, looking at that, staring at it as paperwork. And, you know, I, I always like to say that, you know, this shouldn't be like uh, like doing your taxes. So we we talked to uh, our client about different ideas, taking slice of life um, aspects, things that happened to uh, he and his partner uh, and finding ways to re-engineer those as fresh show content. Uh, we also talked about the whole notion of asking what else instead of just uh, we'll get into it here in a minute about low hanging fruit, but the obvious things, because I think that wears you down too. you go to an obvious uh, topic in, a, you know, in your show prep service or in, on a blog or whatever you see, uh, social media or whatnot, and you go to the, uh, you know, the immediate thought and that becomes routine. And as Andy said, it just, you know, that starts to uh, uh, perpetuate itself. But we came up with some brainstorm, some different ideas in different ways for him to approach the show prep process. Steve Martin uh, said that whenever he felt like he needed to be inspired or get some fresh content, he would go and do something he's never done before. Mm -hmm. Go to a different part of town, go to a different park, take a different drive to work, uh, enroll in a class that you have really no interest in the class. It just exposes you to different stimulus. And in doing so, it wakes up that part of your brain that is open to new creativity. So that's a, that's another way uh, to, to get inspired. Andy, how do you stay fresh? Uh, how, how do you get, get your uh, clients to stay sharp and fresh and unique and different every day? Well, two things. The first one sounds uh, really simple, but it works is actually take time off when you take time off. One of the things that can, you know, when I know we all work a lot of hours and, and it's hard to 
to turn off the phone and shut off the email when you're actually away from work. But sometimes that can help reset you creatively is to actually make an effort to do that. The, the second is to a lot of the times when we get in a creative rut, it's because we're relying 100% on ourselves or at least too much on ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adopting a best idea wins philosophy where you're really open uh, to the ideas of others so you can harvest their creativity too is another another great way to to get out of that slump. Okay. So a couple of ways to get out of your slump, do something different, do something new. Uh, uh, like, like I mentioned before, take a different route to work, uh, harvest your life. This is, I think this is really key. And, and this is what uh, we encouraged our client a couple of weeks ago to do, which is to um, uh, pay attention to your internal monologue and what's your reaction to things that are happening around you. Um, there's, uh, there's a story that comes out in the news or a blog post that you read, or you see something on TV, or you watch something on Netflix, pay attention to what your reaction is to that. Your emotional reaction is to it, because that's where you're going to find your best content. You're going to, that's where you'll find your most unique content that nobody else is doing. Those life observations are usually where the, the, the most prolific content is going to come from. And that can come from anywhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. And and that's uh, what will help get you beyond that low hanging fruit. And by low hanging fruit, uh, we mean that if, um, uh, if I say table, you think chairs, if I say salt, you think pepper, if I say up, you think down, that's low hanging fruit. And that's what everybody is doing. Let's let's talk about how uh, shows fall into that, in, into the slump because they're reaching for the low hanging fruit guys. Well, I mean, that's, uh, the first idea that pops into your head is also the first idea that pops into every on-air personality's head. So it's the, the same, that same idea is popping in the head of your competition too. It's because it's the easy thing. The thing that we all think about when, when we're reading a topic and we'll go through some of those examples in a little bit, uh, So being open to looking everywhere for inspiration helps a lot too. The reason the Beatles were so prolific as songwriters is, you know, several of their hit songs came from a line that somebody said to them. You know what I mean? Hard Day's Night. Somebody said, I feel like I'm working eight days a week. And and they overheard it in the bar, you know? Right. I think it's going to be obvious as well. I mean, we've talked about this before where, uh, you know, if the, 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 uh, Powerball goes to, you know, a billion dollars. What would you do with that? I mean, every show in the market's going to do that. You know, try to at least brainstorm something a little different, like who's not getting a dime of your money once you hit that $2 billion jackpot or something that goes beyond the obvious first thought. That's that's what we really coach our, our, our clients to do is go beyond that first thought. So dig deeper, in other words, and we think uh, there, there's a couple of questions that you can ask yourself in the prep process. One is, what else? What else can we do with this? How can we get deeper? How can it be bigger? How can it be bolder? How can it be more interesting? How can it be something that nobody else is doing? So what else can we do? And keep asking yourself that. One technique that you can use that will help you get there is someone different into your brainstorming and show prep meetings. Get the receptionist, get someone from promotions, get an intern in there, bring a friend in that doesn't have anything to do with radio. Bring a salesperson in, ask them questions and let them participate and then really listen to what they're saying. They won't have the idea you want to put on the air, but they may say something that leads you to what else or what different that we could do. Then ask yourself two other questions. What could happen uh, and what should happen? Or what would be really cool if it did happen? And as you start thinking about those possibilities, you'll start to recognize different things that happen in the prep process that can can be really cool on the air. Well, and I hear a lot of shows that discover mid-break what their angle is or how they really (laughs) should be talking about the topic. And that's why, so if they would ask these same questions in the prep process, they would get there much sooner. And and then, you know, and we've talked about this a a lot, they feel uh, they're afraid to bring it back. So they feel like they missed that opportunity to talk about it. And you taught me a lesson a long time ago when we were talking about this with a break I was frustrated with, and you you said, go do it tomorrow. You know, you didn't miss that chance. 
do that break again tomorrow with the new angle. And it changed a lot of my perspective. Yeah. Don't rush to get it on the air. Um, the, the, the thing that taught me that lesson was several years ago, I was working with a show in Omaha and they were on the air one morning when the news broke that Janet Jackson had just had a baby, but she was 52 years old and she just had her first child. And they stumbled through the story and they were saying, hey, we're just finding out Janet Jackson had her baby. They put it in their entertainment report. And then they talked for two or three minutes about nothing really other than saying, congratulations, Janet Jackson. She's a new mom. And afterwards, I said, you know, what else could you have done with this? And they said, well, it was breaking news. We had to do it right away. I said, well, the thing is, tomorrow morning, she's still going to be a new mom. Tomorrow morning, it shall be a mom for less than a day, and reality is going to start setting in. And a week from now, she'll be at home with a newborn for the first time. You could do this a week from now. And then we, we brainstormed for about 10 minutes on different things they could do with it, and they came up with several different angles that were all terrific. Uh, and it led to one of the hosts said, you know, there should be a cutoff point where people can't be parents anymore because do you realize she's going to be 70 years old when her child graduates from high school and nobody should have to go to graduation ceremonies when they're that old. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so you don't have to rush to get it on the air. If you are in the breaking news business, you probably need to rush to get it on the air. But if you're not in the breaking news business, you're in the entertainment business, all you're doing is taking those stories as inspiration. To, to put it on. Uh, I got I got another example. This uh, this just happened this week. Uh, I work with KLAL in Little Rock. It's Heather and Pool Boy. And uh, deer hunting season opened in Arkansas last weekend. And Pool Boy came on and said, so here's the thing. Uh, 300,000 uh, dudes from Arkansas are going to be out with guns shooting deer this weekend. And my wife needs to show me a little bit more gratitude. She needs to be, uh, you know, I deserve far more credit than I get from my wife because I'm not a deer hunter. And he say he see, and, and Heather said, what do you mean? You don't like deer hunting. You don't want to deer hunt. He goes, that's right. And I need more credit for that. Because think how much money it costs. Think how much time is invested. I'm going to be with my family all this weekend. I'm not going to be out deer hunting with everybody else. I deserve to be rewarded for that. But she goes, but you hate deer hunting. You have no interest in deer hunting. And I should get credit for that. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's digging a little bit deeper. So let's get into a couple of stories here and demonstrate how this works. Um, this is a story from last week's election. Uh, in the November 8th election, Pennsylvania's Anthony DeLuca won re-election in a landslide, even though he's been dead for a month. And the same thing happened in San Diego for a local election where Simon Silva won by 150 votes, even though he had died several weeks earlier. <laughs> what can we do with that, guys? Uh, what do we do on the air, uh, on the air with this? Well, I, I thought about, uh, you know, campaign signs or campaign promises from the dead, you know, and uh, uh, for example, you know, be, uh, they'll have to raise me up before I raise your taxes. <laughs> That's great. I Yeah, I, we're kind of along the same lines. I always think, you know, using this as a jumping off point to talk about something else, like maybe how embarrassing for his opponent to lose to a dead guy. And then maybe use that to talk about the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me at work, where I accidentally texted my boss, I love you instead of my wife, mm -hmm. and throw that out as a as a phone topic. Another angle that's similar to yours, Mike, is uh, um, sucks to be dead and still have to go to work, or the advantages right. of having a ghost state representative, because there's right. probably some fun things you could do with that. Right. Uh, uh, first thing I thought of is I'd vote for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it came down to candidate, uh, this candidate or a dead guy, would you, who, who would you vote would for? You, would you vote right. for a dead guy? Do you wish a dead guy would run in your area? Yeah. What dead guy do you wish would run for office so you could vote for them? Um, or uh, they got elected, uh, and I believe it was in Pennsylvania where he they, they had to go through this whole process now, where he's officially a congressman for a period of time before they can have a, a have a reelection. He's in office even though he's dead. 
Um, is that an improvement or not? <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and see, those ideas go beyond what a lot of shows will do is just sit there and uh, what I call, uh, you know, uh, stand in a circle, kick the topic and look at it and go, wow, that's crazy. How can how can a dead guy win? And, you know, it, it, go, going beyond that first initial reaction about, wow, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, and just and just chatting about it, not really going anywhere with it, taking a little extra time in the show process. And like you said, asking those what else questions. Yeah, I always say, are you a content creator or are you a content reader or curator? Right. If you're just delivering the information and then, and you'll know they're doing that when they get to the end and they're just like, well, now you know. And yeah. That's all <laughs> they're you, adding to it. It's like, okay, well, you, you, just, you just admitted that you added nothing to it. Right. Uh, in the chat, Joe says, is there a way to get away from the obvious political comments that might come in after doing a story, a story like this? Uh, so can you do a story like this and not turn it into complaints about getting political well uh, a i i don't mind the listeners getting personal uh getting political you know what i mean like the i know as talent sometimes we want to guard our uh if we're not on a news talk stations we don't want to get into the the the, the minutiae of the politics of stuff but i don't care if the listeners do I don't think it's political. I think most people, I think the common thread uh, with the audience is most people, you know, are fed up with politicians. So dissing on politicians isn't a big deal. I don't know how, you know, uh, uh, right wing, left wing, Republican or Democrat I get on anything like that. But, you know, hey, the, the common thread is, you know, nobody nobody's a big fan of politicians in general. Yeah, yeah, I th th totally agree. You you want to stay out of getting into the politics anyway because it's boring. Not only is right. it controversial, but it gets boring on the air. But you could cer certainly focus on the dead guy running for office and actually getting elected and winning. And <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an amazing story. All right, here's a, a couple of things that um, turning on the idea of faucet during brainstorming is creating some thought starters to get flowing, collaborating to find original stories and identifying the topics. And that's what we just demonstrated in there. Uh, a brainstorming technique is to just start throwing out thought starters. And as uh, Andy says something, it might trigger an idea from Mike, uh, which might trigger another idea from me. That's why it's important to collaborate and to, uh, to work together and say some of these things out loud. It'll help you not only identify the topics, but identify the stories that you want to take it with. So here's uh, another technique uh, of brainstorming. The movie, A Christmas Story, uh, relevant because we're coming up on the Christmas season, but A Christmas Story was built around Ralphie's dream of getting a Red Ryder BB gun. Let's start with just that. It's, it's, the, it's the essence of what a movie was all about. What can we do with that? Does anyone listening know someone who actually shot their eye out with a BB gun? <laughs> right. Yeah. Is who that... poked their eye out? Yeah, uh, right. How'd you lose your eye? Because uh, your mom always told you and your dad always told you, you can't have a BB gun. You can't be doing that. Don't be jacking around with that because you're going to poke your eye out. You're going to shoot your eye out. Does that ever happen to anybody? Probably <laughs> right. not. <laughs> or toy you dreamed about getting as a kid. Did you get it? Did it live up to its expectations? That's what we, cause we all have that thing. Yeah. Uh, or you leverage that into, uh, you know, another big part of the movie, which was the leg lamp. And you talk about weird, you know, weird things that trigger childhood memories. I mean, there are a lot of different ways you can go with that. Once you start, uh, you know, just throwing out the different, uh, different unique aspects of the story in the film. Or right, what did you want for Christmas so badly and you never got it. And so you bought it as an adult and it's one of the most treasured things that you have. Uh, or what do your kids want? What's the Red Ryder BB gun that your kids want this year? And, and what, what, or what extremes did you go to to get that perfect toy in previous right. years? Yeah, some back in the day, did that. you stand out in front of Toys yeah. R Us for uh, five hours in the cold before you went in and got it for them? Yep. Yep. Uh, in the chat, Susan says, where'd you get your tongue stuck? <laughs> the light bulb <laughs> yep. scene. In, uh, in a Christmas story. That's that's fantastic because it probably happened to somebody. Uh, and it happened to my sister. She uh, licked the uh, rail at church and got her tongue stuck to it, uh, <laughs> just like in a Christmas story. So if you've got a personal story about it, you can tell that story, you can enhance that, or you can expand it. I love that. Um, where did you get your tongue stuck? Not did you get it stuck to a light pole in the freezing cold, but where did your tongue get stuck? Which... Okay. Could be a little bit edgy. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Uh, any other ideas come from this? I mean, obviously, there's plenty of angles with to go into other Christmas movies that we all know and love. Right. All right. Um, another technique is to channel your content through character traits in your character profile. Uh, one of the things that we do with most of our clients is take them through a character definition process so they understand who they are on the air and what their role is. And then when you're brainstorming, when you're doing show prep, you can pick different traits in the character profile and tell a story just through that trait. And the result will be multiple possibilities. So if you have three or four people on a show and each has character profiles, you take one piece of content and each of them have to tell the story through a different character trait or two or three different character traits. And you end up with six or eight or 10 or 12 different possibilities. So let's apply that to this. Nick Cannon is in the news again. Five days after we heard he's having his 11th child, it's announced that baby number 12 is on the way. Before we go into the character traits, Andy and Mike, what would you do with this story in general? A uh, general one would be uh, that could get edgy is what endorsements could this open up for him? Because you know, when you're a celebrity, <laughs> no matter what happens in your life, there's a, a category of endorsement. You know, as you get older, it changes the endorsements if you put on weight. What, what endorsements does this open up for him? Yeah. Or, you know, what is this guy a collector? I mean, you know, it, it, just like Jay Leno connect, collects cars. I mean, this guy's collecting kids. You know, they both got burned recently. So, uh, you know, I mean, there are a lot of different angles to take to this. A lot of different stories. Oh, at, what point does he, at what point does he officially become a hoarder? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or relationship. I mean, he's a good looking fellow. Ladies, no matter how cute or successful a guy is, how many kids is too many kids for you to ever consider dating him? You know, yeah, and well, you know what you're not, getting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and he's not married to any of them, so they right. these women do know what they're getting into. I would look for somebody who would be willing to have Nick Cannon's baby and get them on the phone to find out what's going what's going on in your mind, what's going through their head, right? What's happening with you, and <laughs> and see who calls. Okay, now let's apply the character map uh, exercise to this story. Now, let's talk about a conspiracy theorist. This is, by the way, this is all from one of the clients that we worked with. They have three, three traits that we're going to exploit here. What would the conspiracy theorist do with this story? Is this real or just a plot to get people to watch The Mass Singer? Yeah, he doesn't have all these kids. This is a public relations masterpiece that, uh, you know, that, that, that they've uh, developed for him to create all this media and social attention. Right. Yeah, I, don't, I don't believe it's happening in these, the, there's no way that this could possibly be true. And have you have seen all person, these 12 kids? Yes. Yeah. By the way, 12 kids, he's got a basketball team. He's got a full roster yeah. for a basketball team. <laughs> um, how about this one? Same, same personality, the doting mom that has two kids under age two. Maybe the, you could talk about as a mother, uh, I, I'm a mother of two. I, I get maybe 30 minutes a day of me time, you know, parents, how do you find that me time? Maybe use this as a jumping off point to talk about that. Yeah. She, she's a doting mother of two. How, how can you possibly, um, take care of these kids and give the attention and the love and the care that, uh, that they deserve when you got 12, you know, you got 12 kids. Or I am keeping my kids away from those moms uh, because they're going out there having all these babies with Nick Cannon. And I'm not letting my kids play with those kids. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm Mother Bear and I'm protecting them. How about the workaholic who is family focused? Maybe uh, saying I'm a working parent. I put 60 hours a week in, but I still want to find some way to have that quality time with the kids. Maybe you approach it from that angle and, and throw it out for tips and tricks on how you can still say, my wife suggested I take one of the kids to work with me. Is that a good idea? A bad idea? What are some of your tips and tricks? 
Yeah. Or, or, I mean, are some people work to have kids? Uh, you know, we have a neighbor here, a good Catholic family. I think they have about nine or 10 and, uh, you know, and the guy's working two jobs and going, you know, going crazy, just trying to support this, but they do it willingly. I would take the angle that uh, that's why Nick Cannon's working so many jobs and he has to keep going and he has to keep in the press because he keeps collecting more and more kids. Um, and, yeah. and everything that he's saying, he loves these kids. He loves being mm -hmm. a dad and he just wants, uh, wants to keep it going. Well, and if that's, if you're a workaholic, that trade also might lead you to think of it from the angle of that's 3 million. He pays $3 million in child support a year. So you could also approach <laughs> it from other things you could buy with that 300 million, you know, you could buy 15 Ferraris, 461 Super Bowl tickets or some, you know, there's a lot of fun you can have with that $3 million angle too. Yeah. How, how, and how much per, uh, per kid is that of that $3 million? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Susan says, how do you split your time among that many kids? I wonder if he sees those kids. Right. You think he sees those kids? At, uh, the, what's the oldest, like uh, four or five years old? I wonder how much time he spends with them, how often he sees them. Yeah. Uh, can, according he to the can he remember their names? <laughs> yeah. According yeah, to what right. I've read, he actually <laughs> does make an effort to spend time with them, and the mothers seem to be happy with it. But, you know, I, I don't, uh, at some point, the math just doesn't work out. <laughs> wonder if the, I wonder what, the, wonder what a family reunion's like with them. <laughs> Talk about dysfunctional family reunions when you bring all those moms and all those kids together, meeting each other for the first time. My brother, my sister. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so that's just an example of how you can create original content, how you can brainstorm some things. Um, there are a ton of resources that we have available for you at uh, tjohnsonmediagroup.com and on Insiders Radio Network. Uh, there's the Missing Link Seminar. It's the show prep, the Missing Link. We have some really more good. examples there about how you can get deeper. We've, we've got um, uh, some techniques that you can use when we get a little bit deeper into some of those techniques. There's an ebook at tjohnsonmediagroup.com called Harvest Your Life, which helps you get deeper into things that happen to you, observations that you have, things that you overhear, how to turn that into content. Uh, we have content in Personality Magnet, uh, show prep service. It's daily show prep for personalities. It's a great starting point that will take you there. And if you go to Insiders Radio Network and go to the articles there, go to the uh, personality section and click on show prep, there's dozens of articles about show prep, including some of these techniques and how you can create original content. Uh, so turning on the idea faucet, how to create amazing content through personal character traits and by brainstorming a little bit deeper. At this point, we will take some questions from you. Uh, anything that you uh, want to know, anything that you would like some answers on, whether it's about uh, the show prep process, about uh, turning on the idea faucet, getting out of a slump, anything regarding personality radio or uh, radio in general, we will stay on and answer questions for you as long as those questions come in. You can type them in the chat. Uh, I've got a couple of questions that came in um, a, a little bit earlier and we will uh, answer those first, but if you have questions now and you want to type them in, we'll get to those just as soon as we can here for you. Uh, first one is, um, how do we brainstorm content together when we hardly see each other? And as soon as the show is over, we're all pulled in a million directions between sales and promotions and appearances and a couple of the guys on the show just want to rush and get out the door. How do, how do we how do we brainstorm and how do we collaborate together when we are all busy wearing a lot of different hats? Well, two things. One, how did we all collaborate during the pandemic when we were all stuck at home? I mean, we found creative ways to do it through technology and make it happen. It, 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 it's a necessary part of the process. It cannot be cut out, that collaborative brainstorming and collaborative preparation so you got to find a way if you can't block out the time to actually do it which is what you should do you you have to get creative with with technology i mean i've got a show that's in that exact same situation and that's what i told them is you know text and and have a google doc that you work on together email whatever you've got to do to be able to communicate uh you got to get creative yeah and oftentimes i find that's an excuse i mean yes it's it's true. Everybody's wearing multiple hats nowadays. Time is at a premium. But I found that a lot of shows don't want to put the effort into. They're, they're, part of this is work. It shouldn't feel like taxes, but it, it is some work. 
And it's part of the daily grind we talk about. But you can find a few minutes after the show to get together, do some creative stuff. And as Andy pointed out, you can have a working document throughout the day that you can add things to, uh, text back and forth. Uh, there's really no excuse for not work. I mean, this is your show. This is your content. You got to put the effort in. Well, and this is supposed to be the fun part. The creative right. part is actually the fun part. <laughs> I had that with a show this uh, morning that that uh, has struggled with show prep. And we got into a brainstorming session and they were laughing and they came up with these great ideas. I said, you're doing show prep. This is what you hate. You're doing yeah. it right here. Yeah, I, I was on a call this morning as well that does a, a regular relationship feature uh, almost every day. Um, and we were talking about how we can make these more creative, make them more provocative, make them more interesting, create more emotional con uh, connections. And the comment was, well, we're working on tomorrow's. And I said, we should be working on a week from tomorrow's. Mm -hmm. If you're working farther ahead, then there's no pressure to knock out the content for tomorrow's show. Uh, if you're working farther ahead, you can relax, you can have that fun. But if you're staring at a run sheet for tomorrow and you've got four, a four hour show with four breaks per show, you got 16 pieces of content and now you're filling slots yes. instead of creating content and figuring out where that content's going to go. So get ahead of yourself on things that, especially things that are evergreen, like relationship features, you, you need to work a little bit farther out. So you're not working for the show making the show work for you. And along those lines too, don't be afraid. You shouldn't have to create 16 pieces of content necessarily. Um, I'm a big advocate of, of creating fewer, better pieces of content and More then repurposing less. those. Yeah, there's um, absolutely. And, and if you get a great topic with multiple angles, you can stretch that across two or three or even four hours by taking a right. different approach to that same angle. So you know, play the hits. Uh, how often are you turning over your hits? Play them a lot. Um, do, do less, do it bigger, do it more, and, and pour more of your prep time and more of your creative time into doing fewer things, and you're going to have much better results. Uh, if anybody has a question, you can type it into the chat box now. A lot of you are still on uh, watching. So if you've got a question about um, uh, personality radio in general or anything, uh, now is the time to type it in and we will answer those questions. Another question came in earlier about what do I do about a co-host who doesn't want to prep? All they want to do is respond on the air and do it spontaneously and naturally and capture our natural emotions on the air? How do I get them interested in doing some of these things? Yeah, I mean, that's from smacking them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't work. I mean, it, it, that's winging it, you know, I mean, essentially, and yes, you can get some gems out of that every once in a while, but rarely does that ever work consistently on a level where you can actually win in a market. It just doesn't. It, it, you have it, it to put in the work. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I think, you know, part of that could be, too, that you've got to make the process engaging and fun for that other person. So that would be the other thing I'm looking at. If you are staring at a run sheet and if you are filling slots, you're not going to get a lot of buy-in from your co-host who wants to uh, you know, want to do prep. But if you can make the process more creative, more fulfilling and more fun, I, I, I think you might get you know, that, that cooperation you're looking for, but you got to do it to Andy's point. And another angle is what you guys mentioned earlier, bringing other people in to get the brainstorming yeah. going. Like if you're, if you're stopped, bring somebody else. In. And, and it also creates that fun environment where they'll probably want to participate. Mike and I are working with a show that was pretty undisciplined in their prep process. And, and we had to get some discipline put in place. So we said, well, start sending us your run sheet every day. And they did. And we comment, Mike does it more than I do, but we comments back on it uh, for about two weeks every day. What about this? What about that? Just fine tuning it. The run sheet started getting better. The show started sounding better and the ratings have skyrocketed in just a matter of weeks. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think uh, the, the time spent prepper, uh, preparing is directly proportional to the time spent listening. Yeah, the first run sheet was like uh, barely a page 
um, and not very creative. And then as we started getting them into the process and they started enjoying it and they started seeing the results on the air, I think the last one I saw was two and a half pages and, uh, and, and of good stuff too. Yeah. And it's, it's no longer a chore that I have to do because someone told me I have to do it. Now it's an integral part of the show. Uh, and yeah, that's so much of it. If you, if you've got a co-host or a partner who just doesn't want to do it and you can get them to commit to doing it and coming to the meeting and keeping the meeting short, keeping it fun, keeping it interesting um, and get them to commit to doing it for 30 days, do it for four weeks. It takes about that long to form a new habit. Yeah. And if those meetings are 15 to 30 minutes, not an hour and a half to two hours, and it's fast paced and you start seeing that reaction on the air, that becomes a new habit before long. And it can be a good new habit. So ask for a little and maybe you'll get a lot. I see no more questions coming in. Uh, Jack Diamond, uh, thank you for uh, the comments. It's great sessions, guys. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Same back at you, Jack. Yep. Uh, Jack thank Diamond's you. a show that uh, Mike worked with uh, here in San Diego for many years. Jack is great. Yeah, and you talk about prep. There's a guy that really uh, does put in the work. Yeah, prep and connections in the local community. That's what yep. uh, that's what Jack excels in. So mm -hmm. thank you all for coming to workshop number five, uh, turning on the idea faucet. Uh, we appreciate it. We will have one more before the end of the year. We look forward to talking to you in December with our next workshop. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks. Bye.